Hey, what's up? It's Ben from Wad Prep, and in this video, I am here with Dr. Jimmy Westover from Back to Movement Denver. He is going to help you recover from CrossFit Open Workout 20.2. So if you're feeling sore, if you're feeling beat up, um, if you did all 20 minutes of the workout, you need a recovery workout, and that's exactly what we are going to show you here today. Before we move any farther, all you need is a box, a foam roller, maybe a kettlebell, a light wall ball, and a massage ball of some sort. This one happens to be a wad prep massage ball, and it's available on Amazon and has been for far too long, so please go buy all of them. If you are someone who's over the age of 35 here at Wad Prep, we are trying to change the game when it comes to master specific coaching. I'll talk about a couple more details at the end of this video, but if you're, if you're just dying to know, we do have a link in the top comment and in the description below. Last but not least, if you are like, wow, I wish I had a strategy for 20.2 and for 20.1. Well, the good news is if you go to wadprep.com and sign up for the Wad Prep strategy guides, you can get free strategy delivered directly to your email inbox for 20.3, 20.4, and beyond. So make sure you go do that. But let's talk about this workout. Coach Jimmy is going to lead us through step by step how to recover so that you can either hit your next workout, you're going to feel fresh for 20.3, or God forbid you repeat 20.2. Coach Jimmy, before we dig into the actual workout, just give us some, some knowledge nuggets on, should you repeat this workout? I would strongly suggest, unless you have like a catastrophic failure at like halfway, or earlier, I would not redo this workout. So like your jump rope breaks in half. Yep, or like for some reason you slip off the ball, like, or something happens just catastrophically and- you There's an earthquake. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly. If you make it through half of this workout, finish it and then call that your attempt because I promise you that this is gonna light up not only your calves, it's gonna tear up your hands. And guys, there's a lot of open left. Do not, do not blow up on this workout because it's long and it's sneaky. This 20 minutes, with, especially with how much core we're smoking in this workout, uh, the amount of toes to bar, the amount of jumping you're going to be doing, don't redo it. We just don't suggest it. It's really going to tax you. If you redid the last workout and got a better score, congratulations, that's fine. This is a whole different animal. This is a lot more volume, a lot more movement, um, and you could really mess yourself up. So with that being said, let's get into the recovery workout. So kind of like last time, we're gonna do more of a kind of movement recovery with some like rolling out and move, like light movement. And then we're gonna have a little bit of a workout after that. So first thing first, there's a lot of double unders in this workout. And what happens to a lot of people when they do a lot of double unders? Their calves are killing them. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna roll out our calves, okay? Now, a lot of you guys are probably gonna be like, oh man, my calves are so tight. Let's immediately go for like the kettlebell. I'm gonna strongly advise, we're gonna be doing three rounds of this little series here. I would say start really light. Start with a gentle foam roller. Not that this one's particularly gentle, but start light. So what Ben's gonna do is he's gonna roll out his calves for 30 seconds, okay? So he's gonna be going the whole length of the calf for about 30 seconds. It's gonna be really tempting to just sit on a spot and just romp on it, because your calves are gonna be super tight. But guess what that's gonna do? That's gonna make them more tight. So we want about 30 seconds, again, rolling that whole length and from side to side on the calf. So let's say Ben's rolled it for about 30 seconds. From there, he's gonna hop up because we don't wanna just roll it out. And now we're gonna do a little duck walk. So kind of like we worked last week where we worked the opposite muscle group. Now we're gonna work the opposite muscle group of the calves. So toes are gonna be up in the air and then we're just gonna be walking forward. You should feel this on the front of the shin a little bit, okay? And we wanna go about 20 feet or 20 steps. So what we're gonna move into next is a nice little shoulder uh, relaxation kind of movement. So we're gonna be doing a lot of toes bar and a lot of thrusters. Our shoulders are gonna get pretty tired and our core is gonna be pretty exhausted. So I'm gonna have Ben go against the wall here. All right, he's gonna be putting his feet up against the wall, kind of like the back exercise we did last week, okay? Then he's gonna put his hands kind of up in the air, just straight up in the air like that. Perfect. Now, the whole time, I want you guys nice and relaxed breathe, breathing and a little bit of gentle pressure into the wall, nothing crazy. Then one arm at a time, I just want you to reach back like this as we keep breathing. Now make sure that those ribs don't pop up like crazy, right? So we don't want that. Ribs are staying down, just like that, and we're reaching to the wall behind us. Once we get down there, then we sweep down and around, and then we come back up. 
So we're gonna be doing 20 of those on each side. So I would advise to go one side and then the other and then back. So 40 total, 20 on each side. So just like Ben's doing, nice and relaxed, just kind of getting that full range. So as he reaches up and then he reaches back like he's trying to touch the wall and then he keeps that tension as he sweeps around, okay? All right. So let's say Ben's done his 40 here, okay? It's 20 each side, so I'm counting to 40 total. One, two, three, okay. Yep, exactly. And then this flows perfectly into our next exercise, which is something you guys may have seen last week if you watched that video before, and that is the little curl up, right? So we're doing pretty heavy dumbbell thrusters. So let's get real. After about 20 minutes, people's dumbbell thrusters might turn a little smush, like, you know, mashed potatoes eat. Your lower back is gonna be on fire, especially if we're doing 20 point, you know, we did 20.1 a week ago, so we might be kind of smoked, especially if we did it multiple times like you weren't supposed to. <laughs> so we're just gonna pepper in a little bit of low back relief. So just in case you forget, feet are nice and pressed into the wall, hands come together just like this, and then we're gonna do that little curl up, okay? With this, we're only gonna hold for about 30 seconds, okay? Then we're gonna, let's say Ben's held for 30 seconds, he's gonna relax, oh, thank God. take a big deep breath, and then come back up for his second set, okay? And he's gonna be doing three sets of 30 seconds. Now, make sure that you're breathing while you're doing this, all right? It's very easy to hold your breath. Just like Ben talked about with double unders and holding your breath, yeah. or the thrusters and holding your breath, make sure you breathe here, all right? Good, and then you can relax. Awesome. Now we go on to the forearms. So let's get real. We're holding on to that bar and then we're doing a bunch of jump ropes. And if you have a kind of a heavy jump rope, your arms are gonna be screaming at you. So what we're gonna do is I'll have Ben pop up and you can do this on the ground. You can do this on like a table, whatever. All I want you to do, kind of like we did the calves, is I want you guys to focus on rolling out the backside and the front side, okay? So we wanna go both sides of the wrist. So what am I doing here? I'm just rolling on the forearm, yep. both sides, anterior and posterior, how long? So it's just like the calves, 30 seconds. I'd also advise, just like we said with the calves, start gentle, okay? Do not just like find a hot spot and cram on it, because guess what? It's not gonna help, okay? We wanna be nice and gentle, rolling it around, just kind of getting them everything moving. That's gonna be the key to making those forearms feel better, okay? Because as we advise not to do, if you plan to redo this workout, if your forearms and calves are done, guess what? You're gonna make it about 10 minutes and then you're just gonna crap out. So make sure that you're doing this. Now, just like when we rolled out the calves, rolling it out's not good enough. So now what I want you to do, Ben, is I want you to take your fingers and put down that sweet wad prep ball, hands are together, and then I just want you to do little circles here, right? And all of you guys can't hear this, but Ben's wrists My sound wrists super fantastic. All right, guys. Same thing here. We wanna do about 20 of them each direction, kind of like we did the duck walks. Same, same premise. We roll it out and then we move it, okay? Got it. And it's gonna be tempting just to roll it out, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure we move afterwards. Okay. And then a little recap. Remember, we're doing all of this three times through. So we're starting with the calf smash. We're starting gentle on the calf smash. Then we're increasing it the next round. But after the calf smash, we do our little duck walk, right? Where our toes are up. Then we're doing our breathing and reaching with the shoulders. Then that turns into our little wall crunch, right? To calm down that low back. And we finish with the forearm smash and the wrist rolls. And each round can get progressively, maybe like more intense, or you can dig a little bit deeper because as you start to move, things will start to loosen up. You can maybe get in there a little bit deeper, but don't push it. 100%, and, and in like the second or third round, if you find a spot that's like, whoo, really tender, another thing that you can do is hold on it for a little bit and move the wrist or move the calf as you're on it. Instead of just sitting on it, right, move, move the wrist. So, fun little anatomy for everybody. The muscles that control the wrist to do this are on this side. The muscles that control the wrist to do this are on this side. So if you find a hot spot on this side, make sure you're moving your wrist in the downward direction. If you find a hot spot here, make sure you're moving your wrist in this direction. That's lengthening the muscle. So I told Ben I wouldn't get too crazy anatomy. Hashtag science. But here we are. Here we are. All right, All right, guys. So now we move on to the little workout, okay? All right, so in this next part, we are going to move over and start to do a workout. Now remember, when we do this workout, it's not a traditional CrossFit workout where we end it laying on the floor, dying in a pool of our own sweat. That's not the goal here. This is a recovery workout. And really the goal here, guys, is 
a really mellow pace. I honestly almost don't even want you out of breath that much. I just want a little bit of sweat. So if you watched any of our earlier videos talking about like central nervous system fatigue, this workout right here is the definition of that. All right, 20.2 is a central nervous system taxer, okay? So we wanna be nice and mellow in this recovery wad so that if for some reason we wanna redo it or we just so wanna we'll keep- for the next week. Yeah, keep succeeding in the open and not just have a crappy week of training. This is really important here, all right? So let's go do it. Pardon the interruption, but there's someone here who's really excited that you are about to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and the thumbs up, and his name is Rango. Rango, are you excited? Rango. Oh my gosh, look, he is so excited that you're about to do all of those things. You're gonna hit subscribe, jump for subscribe. Come on, Rango. give me a jump for subscribe. You're gonna hit the bell, and you're gonna click thumbs up. Right? Rango, Rango one more. So don't let Rango down. He's really excited that you're gonna do all those things. All right, so now let's dig into the recovery workout. Jimmy, walk us through it. All right, so the recovery workout is pretty basic. It's four rounds of Russian kettlebell swings, box step ups, bear crawls, and wall balls. So we'll start with the Russian. You're about to make me do wall balls right now? Yes, but it's with a light wall ball. There's a caveat, everybody. Love this guy. So I mean light, it can be you know, a six pound wall ball. It's really more about the movement than it is the weight. Again. So the purpose of this workout isn't, again, to, to crush you. All these moves, like this is a light kettlebell for me, this is a light wall ball. It's just to get your body moving and to do a few reps. 100%, it's just to kind of flush everything, let the body calm down, get a nice little sweat going, but don't kill yourself. So same thing with these box step ups, they're mellow, okay? Don't kill it. So Good at that. four rounds. We're starting with the light Russian kettlebell swings. We have 20 reps of that. Keys here, guys, with the Russian kettlebell swings, the back's gonna be a little bit tired, so making sure that as we do that Russian kettlebell swing, we come down and then we pop it up and we just let it float, right? There's no need to do this fast arm pull CrossFit style Russian kettlebell swing. Nice, relaxed, and I challenge you guys to try to breathe as you do this. So breathe in and then breathe out as it comes up, in and then out, okay? Just like that. So you have 20 reps of the Russian kettlebell swing. So again, right to eye level. Honestly, if you want to, as long as the kettlebell's kind of in this range, you're, rock, you're ready to rock and roll. No need to go up into this range, okay? And then what would it look like, like if I was doing it wrong, like what would maybe a bad version of it be? Like what's a common mistake people make with a with, kettlebell? With a Russian kettlebell swing? A, one of the biggest ones I see in a lot of CrossFitters is they love to come up and they love to extend their back for some reason. So, so at the top, yeah, they're doing that. Okay. So guys, what I want you to focus on is when you get to the top, squeeze the glutes, and that's fully extended. There's no need to lean back, okay? Especially after this workout. <laughs> you don't wanna aggravate anything more. So it's just right here, a nice little glute squeeze, boom, and we drive it up. The other common- Another thing, like, I see some people do it really squatty. Yep. Right, so we're, we wanna hinge at the hip, we're engaging our glutes, slight bend in the knees, but I shouldn't be like, coming down here and going up and then. Exactly, as we come over, we wanna make sure that our chest comes over as the kettlebell comes down, but we don't wanna round the back. I see, just kinda of like Ben was saying, you see a lot of people get squatty and their chest is really vertical, right? We wanna let the chest come over and get that nice hip hinge as the weight comes back and then we drive it up. Okay. So, and into the next thing, a lot of people love to bend early. So we wanna focus on almost playing chicken with the kettlebell. Kettlebell's coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down, and then, we send our hips back, kettlebell comes through, and we're back up. If we bend early, you're just asking for okay. tie yourself out. And remember, this is a recovery workout. All right, and the kettlebell is very light. So very they light. do their 20 Russian kettlebell swings, obviously with perfect form, just like we just demonstrated. Uh, what's next? Next is some good old fashioned box step ups. So no box jumps, right? Because our calves are gonna be quite tired. So we're just gonna put a foot up, and then we're gonna step up. And let's be real, honestly here, I'm okay. If you step up, put your hands on your knees okay. and just give it a little help up. Now, if we were doing, if this was in an open workout, that probably wouldn't fly. But remember, recovery workout. So there's no shame in doing a little assistance. Okay. Now, don't put a ton of weight into your knee. Uh, honestly too, as the reps go on, 
try to challenge yourself. And now that is 10 total reps. Okay. So it's five per side. So it's easy. And if it's, if that's too hard, this was a 24, you can always drop it down to a 20 and voila. Absolutely. And two for our female athletes or, you know, our shorter athletes, if 20 is too much and you're like, wow, my calves are killing me, grab a couple plates, right? Do some plate step ups sure. or some jerk blocks. Like we saw Rango jump on last time. Yes, of course. All right. So after the 20 box step ups again, slow methodical, or it was only 10, 10 only 10. Step -ups. What's next? Next, we have 50 feet of bear crawls. So again, for those people that are distantly challenged, 50 feet, it's not terribly long, but what I want in these bear crawls is there's a couple different versions, but the one that Ben's doing right here is what I want to see. So butt's kind of up in the air, weight's a little bit in the hands, and you're just kind of bouncing along, kind of like a bear in a field. And I have a challenge, a bear in a field, a, a bear in a if meadow. If you've never seen a bear in a field, that's exactly what they look like, folks. Just so like what that. would be a wrong version of the bear crawl? So a wrong like version a would be kind of like a, almost like a, like a Spider-Man bear crawl, okay. or, you know, where we're really bending the knees down. I just want it nice and relaxed, butts up in the air, a little bit of weight in the shoulders. It's meant to kind of shake out the shoulders from the thrusters and the toes to bar. Okay. Okay. All right. So butt up in the air, not spider bear. But Not happy fun. bear. Happy bear. Okay. And, and I have a challenge for all of you guys. This is a challenge that I always try to challenge people to is see if you can do this with a frown on your face. <laughs> I almost guarantee that you cannot do this for 50 feet with a frown on your face. That's ridiculous. And we're going to move on to the next movement. So they do 50 feet of, of that, yep. of the happy bear crawl. And then the next movement is? Last but not least is the wall ball. And now I bet, like Ben said earlier, a lot of you guys are like, no way am I doing wall balls right now. Guys, it's with a really light wall ball. So that could be 10, that could be 12, all right? I want under 14 pounds on these wall balls, okay? All right. And all we're gonna do is we're doing 20 reps of this, nice and relaxed. So we're coming down with that nice big breath, exploding up, getting to your normal height, okay? okay? It's a light weight, but it's a normal height that you go to. So we're going down and we're coming up, letting the ball go. Good. And the key here, guys, there's no race to it. So make sure that you're breathing throughout. In on the down, exhale as you come up. Perfect. All right. Just like that. Nice, easy 20 reps. Wall balls are way better when they're half the weight. Way better. So that's it. Four rounds. Again, it's the 20 swings. 20 swings. 10 box step ups. Yep. About 50 foot of bear crawl, happy bear crawl. And then how many wall balls? 20? We're doing 20. Yep. And it's four rounds for that at what kind of pace? A 99% pace where I'm going as fast as humanly possible or? I wanted it at a pace that you could almost hold a conversation while you're doing this. Enough that when, you're, when you finish, you could almost kind of have like this conversation. You might be a little bit out of breath, but not that you're like, hold on. It's right? Excellent acting. So I like a warm up pace. Maybe it's like we're just getting our blood moving. Yep. Maybe a little bit more aggressive than a warm up okay. pace, but not by much. Okay. That's awesome. That's simple. It's an easy workout that you can do. You really don't need very much equipment. We're going to mobilize and smash and try to loosen everything up that might be a little sore and tender. Then we're going to get our blood moving by actually going through the workout. And that's that. Absolutely. And guys too, let's say you're at a place that doesn't have a fancy box or wall balls. You can just find something to step up on do and then squats. do air squats with a toss, right? So this workout can be done anywhere. If you're you doing- hold a small child in your hand. <laughs> exactly. And small children throw, love to be thrown in the, in the air. air. So I hope that you like this video where we walked you through a few different drills and workouts that you can do to recover from 20.2. So before we see you next week after 20.3, I just wanna make sure that you know about a few things. Remember, if you haven't yet hit the subscribe button so that you never miss one of the wad prep videos, hit that notification bell. If you are a master's athlete, 35 years or older, then please click the button or click the link in the description or in the top comments. We have an incredible master's only coaching community that is a heck of a deal right now during the CrossFit Open. Um, and if you haven't yet, make sure you go to wadprep.com to subscribe for our ultimate strategy guides that we release every single week for each and every open workout. You don't want to miss those. We have a lot of content here, obviously, but the most important thing is I hope that you're having fun during the CrossFit Open. Coach Jimmy, I'm going to throw this one randomly at you. What's the question of the day? What are you grateful about your ability to do fitness, I guess? I like that. No, I like that. No, 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 I like that. So what are you grateful for with your fitness? Yeah. Like what, what, what are you grateful for? What is one positive trait about your fitness that you are proud of? Leave that in the comments below. I freaking like that. He didn't even know I was going to do that. I just threw him under the bus on the spot. That Fly. was like... 
That is a great, yeah, we're live, kind of. Uh, that was a great, great question. So answer the question, leave a comment, and let us know, and we will see you next week.